Hi, this is Anton from the Terra team. In this video, I'm going to guide you through a simple example of creating a data table from scratch and uploading it to the data section of your workspace. I'll start by explaining the different categories, or entity types, to which every data table must belong, and then we'll create some spreadsheets which we'll save in the proper format and upload in the proper order. Tables are located under the Data tab in the Terra workspace. The tables in this section keep your metadata organized in the way necessary for the workflows to handle them, and this section of the workspace can be found by clicking the tab labeled Data when in any workspace. You can import metadata here by pressing the plus button and uploading a tab separated values, or TSV format spreadsheet. Before we do this, let's take a few minutes to familiarize ourselves with the types of data tables used by Terra. You can read much more about the use of data tables in Terra by visiting our support center. One crucial concept you need to understand in order to use Terra data tables is that every data table represents an entity type. The proper organization of metadata depends on the type of study you are doing and the type of data you are working with. Depending on what you're doing, your data may be nested or correlated in a variety of ways specific to your work. In order for Terra to do its job, it needs to know whether the data in a given workspace represents, for example, a set of matched tumor normal samples, or a set of phenotype data from a large cohort, or a gene panel for a particular patient. To handle this question, Terra recognizes a set of built-in categories called entity types. Our support center describes this concept in more detail, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we only need to understand three things. Number one, every table has one entity type. Number two, the entity type is determined by the top left cell of the spreadsheet, which must contain exactly the following characters. The word entity, followed by a colon, followed by the exact name of that entity type, as shown in these sample tables. There should be no spaces in this cell, only letters, underscores, and a colon. Number three, if the study you are running requires the use of multiple entity types, for instance, if one table is keeping track of the list of patients and another is keeping track of various samples from those patients, you will need to upload those tables in a specific order and click Create Participant Sample Pair Associations at the prompt in the pop-up window that appears when you try to upload the files. If you do not do this in the correct order, you may see an error message when trying to upload. Okay, we are almost ready to create our own data table from scratch and upload it. Let's return to the Terra interface to see how the data is uploaded. In the Data tab, click the plus icon next to Tables on the left, and this will call a pop-up prompting you to upload a .tsv file. It must be in this tab-separated value format to work, so if you're creating a spreadsheet from scratch, make sure you use a program that can output this file format. Note that with some programs, this format is called Tab Delimited Text, and is generated with a .txt file extension. This type of file is perfectly fine, but you may need to manually change the .txt extension to a .tsv extension. Another useful trick to know in case you can't create a .tsv file, but you do have a spreadsheet from which you can copy paste your desired table structure, is that you can select Text Import in the Upload pop-up window and simply copy-paste a set of rows and columns directly into the field provided. Now let's create our most basic type of table from scratch. I will be using Microsoft Excel for Mac, but many programs will do just as well. A basic entity type in Terra is the Participant Entity Type which simply lists participants according to their participant ID. Just make sure your top left cell matches the one shown here exactly. Then save in the proper format, and if necessary, rename the file to have the .tsv extension. Creating a spreadsheet like this from scratch is one very simple way to get started, but you can also download a TSV spreadsheet from a workspace that contains data. This can be useful both because it can save time, if the table you need to make is very complex, as well as if you are interested in reproducing or emulating a study you found somewhere in Terra, whether in one of our showcase workspaces or just a workspace shared with you by someone else. To download a table, navigate to the Data tab of the workspace that contains the desired data, select the Table of Interest, 
and within that table, select the rows you want to include in your TSV file. All of the columns will be selected automatically. Then click the three dot button and select the download as TSV option. Before we continue, let's quickly modify the table we downloaded to include a column for participant IDs so that Terra will be able to make the association between the two tables. Simply insert a column anywhere to the right of the first column. Remember not to insert to the left of the first column or your new column will become the new first column and the entity type entry at the top left of this table would be wrong. The title of this new column should just be Participant ID, and the fields under the column should contain the names listed in your first spreadsheet. Now click the plus icon in the data table section as described earlier and upload each file in the necessary order. In this case, the participant ID entity type comes first, then the sample ID entity. Make sure to click the Create Associations checkbox. Voila! You have successfully uploaded metadata to your data tab. Note that you can modify many of your data table attributes directly within the Terra interface. If you hover your mouse over a particular field, you should see a pencil icon, which you can click to either modify or delete that attribute. Finally, once we have our data table successfully uploaded, we can launch workflows on this data directly from this part of the interface as well as in the case of metadata that points to storage of genomic data, we can also launch the Integrative Genomic Viewer, or IGV, to explore directly. This concludes our introduction to Terra data tables. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoy using Terra.